Here's Brody Brazil. So here in 2023, after 16 straight seasons of not making the postseason, the Sacramento Kings are officially back. Yeah, that's been awesome. What a story. After so much struggle to get a new batch of players in there, to have the fans reemerge, to finally get a postseason game at Golden One Center, it's been very enjoyable. It kind of feels like the conclusion of a few really rough chapters in this franchise history. So to appreciate the present, I think you need to understand the past decade and how this basketball team was saved in the city of Sacramento and in the region of Northern California. Because in a lot of different ways, during a lot of different times, it completely seemed like they were goners. Which is a crazy thought now when you see these sights, like after the Game 1 win against the Warriors. Fans crowding outside of G1C. They're lighting the beam. This place is going nuts for their basketball team like you knew they could. But imagine if... All of this didn't exist. Like this is that alternate reality that almost didn't happen because they went to Anaheim or Virginia Beach or Seattle about 10 years ago. Those options were all on the table. But fortunately, the course was stayed and this team stayed along with it. So let's go back in time from 2006 to 2013. This was a Kings team that was under almost constant threat of relocation. Anaheim was out there because, well, let's face it, Honda Center exists, Orange County is a big enough market, and yes, yeah, Southern California could probably support three NBA teams. There was very much an infrastructure already in place if the Kings were going to stay in the state and just move south a couple hundred miles. Obviously, Seattle was a previous NBA franchise. Former commissioner, late commissioner David Stern, even once admitted that leaving Seattle for Oklahoma City was a mistake by the league. You could understand that the NBA would want to get a team back in Seattle, but would they do so to sacrifice what already existed in Sacramento? And then there was Virginia Beach where, I'm not sure if this was even a viable option, but there were promises of building a new 18,000 seat arena. Uh, it was talked about and discussed. I don't know how far it got, but certainly Anaheim uh, went far enough and Seattle went really far. In fact, at one point it was announced the Kings would officially be relocating there. Ultimately, they did not. So you understand, for a lot of years, there were a lot of scenarios that got brought up. In fact, in February 2011, the name Anaheim Royals was trademarked. Now, you remember the Royals was the previous name of the Kings. In fact, before they were even in Kansas City, they were the Rochester Royals. That name Royals was tra uh, trademarked along with the city of Anaheim. And the NBA, back in February of 11, they confirmed King's interest in moving to Anaheim. So all of this got very real, very fast. Mind you also, on the court during these years, uh, there were a lot of struggles with Kings basketball. Then in March of 2012, the seventh day of March, a $387 million new arena project was approved by the city of Sacramento for the rail yards location. So that's north, pretty much now, of where the current Golden One Center sits. This new project was set to open in 2015. So you're thinking, hey, they got it sorted out. New arena, the team, the city, everybody agrees. It was voted on. It was a done deal. Until about five weeks later. King's ownership backed out of the deal. George Maloof, co-owner, said, quote, Why don't we look at redoing Power Balance? As in Power Balance Pavilion, former Arco Arena. Most of our customers enjoy going to Power Balance. It just seems more natural which I don't think was a common sentiment of the fan base at that time. Arco Arena was aging. It was built in the mid to late 80s. Uh, at the time, it was already kind of behind the curve and definitely over decades after that. It was not a modern arena almost ever by any means. I think fans enjoyed the history of that building, but maybe not the present amenities of it. So all of a sudden, you had something that was a done deal until it's not. And that brings us to Commissioner David Stern's reaction to the Kings backing out. Quote, it's not going to happen, but I can say the city has stepped up. We have nothing further to give, to cajole, to yell, or all the various ways I've tried to keep the parties on track to get what we thought was a win-win in Sacramento. End quote. So there's your commissioner seeming to almost give up. 
there's not a lot of hope. There's not a lot of optimism. There's no optimism in that quote right there from David Stern, who is actually pretty persistent about keeping the Kings in Sacramento. Looking back, you got to give him a lot of credit on keeping the push alive. January 21st, 2013, the Kings announce the sale of their franchise to a Seattle-based ownership group for relocation. Now, in the middle of that season, if that doesn't spell they're gone to me, I don't know what does. This sale, by the way, was contingent on the NBA Board of Governors' approval. So how did that vote go? Not so well. April 29th, 2013, the NBA's board, NBA Board's Relocation Committee voted unanimously, 7 nothing, against the ability to relocate to Seattle. And even farther than that... In the next month, May of 2013, NBA owners voted 22 to 8, rejecting a Kings move to Seattle. Now, you understand, Seattle was so lined up. They were already an NBA town. They have a lot of the infrastructure in place. Key Arena has since been remodeled and entirely gutted and redone for the Seattle Kraken of the NHL. They would have done that same thing for a brand new version of, well, let's be honest, the Supersonics. But they didn't. You understand how this was like a made-to-happen scenario. Sacramento to Seattle, get a team back up there in the state of Washington. This is something that a lot of people wanted, but not at the sake of Sacramento. NBA owners voted 22-8 to against this happening, which easily could have gone the other way. May 28th, 2013, right after that, the NBA approves a sale of 65% of the Kings to current owner Vivek Ranadive. And he remains the current owner of this team. Things all of a sudden turn for the better. May of 2013, now you've got possession of the franchise that you're going to keep in Sacramento. However, they still need that new home. There's a Sacramento Arena opposition group called STOP. They get, uh, they get donations from a Seattle-based NBA group that was going to buy the Kings and bring them up to the Northwest. All of a sudden, the... The people that were trying to buy the team away from you are now funding the opposition to you building a new home in Sacramento. Chris Hansen was one of the leaders of that investor group in Seattle. He later apologized for his involvement with the opposition group to the new Sacramento arena. So again, at this point, the Kings have seemingly been saved in Sacramento. They're going to find a way under this new ownership to stay. But building a new venue is not easy. Until May 20th of 2014, the Sacramento City Council approves a new arena deal, the current Golden One Center. $507 million total at the time, including $284 million from the team and $223 million from the city, a majority of that coming in bonds. Now, the costs actually for this building went up to 534. I saw somewhere else that it went up to 550 even. It's important you know that the Kings took over the, uh, the additional costs. Uh, they, they took over the offset in construction overruns because they were also building a practice, uh, practice facility. They wanted to make some improvements and some enhancements to the amenities. But Golden One Center got that name through the naming rights in a deal worth $120 million dollars across a 20-year agreement. So all of this worked out, big naming rights deal to cover the additional cost of construction, which again, the Kings paid for. That was not on the hands of the city of Sacramento. It all works out. June 2015, construction and the building are well underway, and this is how it stands today. It gets hard to envision this not happening in retrospect. I mean, it was easy. It could have taken a lot of turns for this not happening. And now it's a it's a centerpiece for downtown Sacramento. That rail yard project, by the way, is still a thing. They're going to develop that area too. What a boost for the downtown area of Sacramento. All those cranes, look at that in the, in the neighborhood surrounding all the new construction, all the new businesses and residences and opportunities, all because people decided Golden One Center should be a thing. And the NBA and the Kings and the fans stayed the course of finding a way for Sacramento to keep their basketball team. Because to be honest, had the Kings left, I don't think they would ever have gotten a second chance of hosting the NBA again. And I think it just you know needs to be said, sometimes uh, 
you got to fight the fight. And that's how the Kings were saved. Imagine if they weren't. Certainly wouldn't be in the playoffs right now in a NorCal rivalry against the Golden State Warriors. So hopefully uh, that gives a little perspective going down memory lane. And what seemed unfortunate for a lot of years with this basketball franchise quickly pivoted in a number of fortunate events. And now we get to enjoy them for a next generation. See you next time. <laughs>